But verily the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is purer and it will bring more comfort. So Shaykh al-Fawzani said, Alhamdulillah, Amar bi talab al risk all praise belongs to Allah who commanded with the seeking of sustenance. Waliktisab. And Allah commanded us to earn a living. Wanaha an il ajiz wa takasul wa ta'atil il asbab. And Allah forbade laziness and inability and the abandonment of the legislated means. And he continued later and he said, Fa'ala al Muslim and Yajidda wa Yajtahida fi talab al risk. It is upon every Muslim to exert themselves in seeking sustenance. Yes, brothers and sisters, it is upon every Muslim to exert themselves to work diligently in seeking sustenance. Why? What's the reason for that? Look, he never said wealth is worthless. You will not find that in the Quran. You will not find that in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Likewise, he didn't say if you work for someone, you're a slave. <coughs> Look how balanced his words are. Yes, he will conclude it's better if you can do trade or business or work for yourself. But also from al-wujuh al-mubaha, from the permissible means to seek your sustenance, is that you take a job if you can't find any other way. Look at the balance. This message, alhamdulillah, is very balanced. Why? Why is it balanced? Because it's based upon Quran and Sunnah. And we will show again, look, the translation of Bukhari. You don't even have to know Arabic to arrive at this conclusion in this day, day and age. There's a chapter in Bukhari that deals with this. What's the problem? Many of us, illa man rahimullah, we are relying upon podcasts for our world views. Podcasts are people who are not people of knowledge, nor have they studied knowledge, nor are they speaking with knowledge. But it sounds good. But that's the danger when something sounds good. If it's not analyzed in the correct fashion and critiqued, it can lead to misguidance. May Allah Azza protect us all from that. The Sheikh said, لِيُغْنِيَ نَفْسَهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ It's upon the Muslim that they work diligently to earn their sustenance so that they are self-sufficient and have no need of the people. Yes, we don't beg. We do not beg and we do not ask of others. Likewise, so that you can suffice man talzamahu nafaqatu. Those who you have to spend upon your families, your children, your mother, your father. Yes, so that you can provide for them. Likewise, look, wealth is not worthless. Waliyatasaddaqa, so that you can give charity, yes. Seek your sustenance so that you can give charity. And you can spend in the avenues of good. If Allah blesses the person with wealth. And the Sheikh, he made a statement next. And this statement is a response to those who say wealth is worthless. He said, And this is derived from a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that I will mention to you insha'Allah ta'ala. The Sheikh said, how excellent is good wealth, lawful wealth for a good person. And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned something very similar. In an authentic hadith, he said, How excellent is righteous wealth for a righteous man. So yes, wealth it does have a value. And no doubt, if you use it in the avenues of good, if you use it and you give your zakat, you fulfill the obligations that are upon you, 
and you give charity and you provide for the poor and the needy. Nam, that's one of the ways, Ikhwan, to remove depression and misery from oneself is to give charity. Then the Shaykh he continued, he said, he said, and there are many ways to seek one's sustenance. And all praise belongs to Allah. And they have been made easy for mankind. And he said, Awaluha, the first way that you can seek your risk. Now when we seek risk from Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah is a razzaq al mateen. He said, Al Bayh wa Shira wal Mutajarat wal Mujarat fi Hududi ma shara Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said the first way, buying and selling and commerce and renting within the boundaries that Allah Azza wa Jal has legislated. And he said, Fatijaratun Naziha, hiya khayrul makasib. Lawful business is the best of ways to earn a living and to support oneself. And now, somebody, look, that's balanced. If somebody was to say, you know, in the West, it is better for you, if you can, that you have your own business, or that you have your own trade, or you're a mechanic, or you're an electrician, or a plumber, because, alhamdulillah, you can go to the masjid, and you can pray your salawat, that's balanced. But to say that if you work, you're a slave is ghulu. Wal-iyadu billah. The Shaykh said, Walhamdulillah, al-asal fil mu'amalat al-hil wal-ibaha. Illa ma dalla al-dalil ala tahrimi. And he mentioned the principle from the principles of Islam. The base rule, the origin as it relates to dealings, is that they are lawful and permissible unless there is a text to establish that they are forbidden and unlawful. And he mentioned the verse from the Quran as a proof of that. Ya ayyuhal amanu, O you who believe. La ta'kulu amwalakum baynakum bil batil. Do not eat the wealth of one another in falsehood, unlawfully. Illa an takuna tijaratan an taradim minkum. Unless it is by way of business and trade among you and there is mutual consent. There is agreement from both parties. So he mentioned what? One of the ways through business, buying and selling. Yes. And we encourage the brothers. And even in this day and age, the sisters, you can sell things from Amazon. Khadija radiallahu anha, nam. She was a businesswoman. In the boundaries that Allah legislated. In this day and age, you can come up with creams and sell them on Amazon. Or organic products, for example. That's just one example. You don't have to leave your house. And you can earn a living. There are many ways that Allah has made easy for us. Naam, the Sheikh said, وَكَذَلِكْ Another way. To seek sustenance. وَكَذَلِكَ He said from the ways of earning a lawful living. And يَتَعَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ الْمِهِنْ Is for people to learn trades and handicrafts. الَّتِي يَكْتَسِبُ مِنْ وَرَائِهَا مِنْ وَرَائِهَا مِنَ السِّنَاعَةِ وَغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْمِهِنِ الَّتِي يَسْتَفِيدُ مِنْهَا أَمْوَالْ مُبَاحَا so likewise, learning a trade, yes. Becoming a carpenter, an electrician, contractor, or other than that. Now, alhamdulillah, in America, and likewise here, we have brothers, alhamdulillah, contractors, and they're earning a good living. Buying houses, fixing the house, and selling it. Walillah, alhamdulillah. Brothers doing very well, electricians, plumbers, and other than that. Learning a trade. And inshallah, later on we will see. I mean, we could introduce it here. This is what we find from the prophets and the messengers. If we look at some of the ahadith, we find in Sahih Muslim, Inna Zakariya alayhi salam, kana najara, 
زكريا عليه السلام was a carpenter. He was a carpenter. Now you have a trade. And if someone has a trade, yes, as communities, if we want to grow, you're a carpenter. Why are we waiting for other schemes and programs? Teach people. Say, listen, I'm going to teach the Shabab. That's one of the ways as well to keep them from the streets. I'm going to teach you how to be an electrician or teach you how to be a plumber or teach you how to be a carpenter or teach you how to be a painter and so on and so forth. It's not taking away from anything from you. That's the way we have to look at things. Some people, they think that if I teach this person what I do, I'm going to lose out. No, your risk is written with Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah fi'auni al-abd ma kana al-abd fi'auni akhi. Allah aids the servant as much as the servant aids their brother. Why not? That was the mentality of the Sahaba, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, as we find in the narration of Anas radiallahu anhu when he said, فَقَدِمَ قَدِمَ عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَنِ ibn عَوْفَ الْمَدِينَ When Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, he went to Medina, فآخ النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بينه وبين سعد بن الربيع الأنصاري. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made the pact between a brotherhood between him and Sa'd ibn al-Rabi' and Sa'd the Ghina. Sa'd was rich. Look at the mentality of the companions, Ikhwan. That's why they were the best of people after the prophets and the messengers. Sa'd رضي الله عن he was rich. فقال لعبد الرحمن بن عوف. Look. The Prophet ﷺ legislated something, submitted wholeheartedly. And look at the level of implementation. He went above and beyond. He gave the offer. He said, Come, uqasimuk, mali nisfain. He said, Come and I will divide my wealth into two halves. Half for you, half for me. I'll divorce my wife so you can marry one of my wives. Look at that level of brotherhood. The world has not seen anything like it. And it wasn't based upon the color of a person's skin. It wasn't based upon the tribe. It wasn't based upon their lineage. It was based upon La ilaha illallah. That was where allegiance revolved around. Not like today where you see various nationalistic movements. Even some of the Muslims, وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ And we fear for them defending the Hebrew Israelites, defending the nation of Islam. People upon clear kufr and ilhad because of nationalism. That's how diseased and corrupt their hearts have become. But the companion, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, he said, Barakallahu laka fi ahlika wa malik. He said, May Allah bless you, your family, and your wealth. He said, Show me to the marketplace, meaning he wanted to do business for himself. Look, he was offered, he didn't ask. There's nothing wrong accepting a gift. That's allowed in the religion. Somebody gives you a gift, you can accept it. Ja'iz. Even if the gift comes from a non-Muslim, you can accept it if it's something that's lawful. But he said, no, show me to the marketplace. Show me to the marketplace. Look at that honor and dignity. The upper hand is better than the lower hand. Ikhwan, someone going around begging and asking others, they lose respect. They lose respect, wallah. Shaykh al Fawzani continued, he said, He said, likewise, fakadalik. Inshallah, I'll summarize because there's quite a bit to cover. He said, The Muslims should learn engineering. Now I'm studying the importance of education, engineering. Likewise, يتعلم الطب, medicine. And other than that, yes, learning these things. Learning medicine, pharmacy. Lawful things. Why? Alhamdulillah, so that you can provide for yourselves and you can provide for your families. And ikhwan, ziyadatan ala dhalik, I mentioned a hadith. Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala declared it to be sahih al-ghayrihi. If you do it, seeking the face of Allah azza wa jal, tu'jar alayh. You'll be rewarded for that. If you do these things, which are the origin, is that they're permissible, but you're doing it for the sake of Allah azza wa jal. You want to become a doctor, you become a doctor so that you can go to various parts of the Muslim world and alhamdulillah you can service the community or even the non-Muslims who cannot afford it. Hada min because as we know in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, there is charity for anything. 
and everything that has a moist liver. There's a hadith that a man passed by مَرَّ عَلَى النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رَجُلْ A man passed by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the companions of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم they saw the strength of this man and his zeal فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ and they said O oh, Messenger of Allah لو كان هذا في سبيل الله if only this man was going out in the path of Allah imagine what he would be able to accomplish. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The Prophet, he responded. He said, إِنْ كَانَ خَرَجَ يَسْعَى عَلَى وَلَدِهِ سِغَارًا فَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If this man goes out, striving, yes, striving to provide for his children, his child who is young, then he is in the path of Allah. Look, subhanAllah, the intention. If he goes out and he's trying to provide for his children who are young, he is in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. When kana kharaja yasa'a ala abawain shaykhain kabirain fawa fi sabiri Allah. If he goes out and he's exerting himself because he's trying to assist his parents who have become elderly, then he's in the path of Allah. Wa in kana kharaja yasa'a ala nafsi yu'ifuha and if he goes out and he's exerting himself so that he doesn't have any need, he's protecting his dignity. Then he is in the path of Allah. But if he goes out showing off and boasting, then he is in the path of the devil. And there's a benefit, Ikhwan, that I want to share with you. From the tafsir of Al Qurtubi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Al Qurtubi, he derives that those who go out to provide for themselves and their families and those who they have to provide for in search of the sustenance of Allah Azza wa Jal, that they are similar to the Mujahideen, those who fight or strive. In the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. What can, does anyone know what ayah he explains with this meaning? Fadl. La. How's that deal for that though? La. La. Have a book, inshallah, if anyone can get the answer. I think the brothers behind me might see it. Bam. Wa akharuna yadribuna fil ardi yabtaguna min fadlillah. Wa akharuna yuqatiluna fi sabilillah. Look, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned wa akharuna. And a group of them, they go out and they travel in the earth searching for the bounty of Allah. And there are others. They are fighting in the path of Allah. Look what Al Qurtubi said so that I'm giving you the understanding of the scholars of Islam. This is not from me. That is why when we disagree, brothers and sisters, because as humans we're going to disagree. We're going to disagree about things. Maybe you have a view, I have a view. But if we find a verse or a hadith in that matter, we say what? Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. We submit. It's over. There don't need to be a discussion. Jazakumullah khairan Shamsi, you mentioned the verse, I submit. You don't come back with just, I think, or we're living in a different time, or the world today. We don't want that philosophy. Al-Qurtubi, rahimahullah, he said, Al-Thamina, the eighth point. Sawa Allahu ta'ala fi hadhi al-aya, bayna darajati al-mujahideen wal-muktasibeen al-mal al-halal lil-nafaqati ala nafsi wa iyalihi wal-ihsani wal-ifdal. فكان هذا دليلا على أن كسب المال بمنزلة الجهاد لأنه جمعه مع الجهاد في سبيل الله. Look, إخوان. سبحان الله. Look how Islam is totally opposed to that idea that working for someone is the person that works for someone is a slave. He said, Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentioned the level of the mujahideen along with those. 
who earn lawful wealth so that they can provide for themselves and their family. Allah Azza mentioned them together in the same verse. He said, this is a proof that earning lawful wealth is a type of al-jihad. Why? Because Allah Azza wa mentioned it along with al-jihad fi sabirillah. The Prophet ﷺ said about the one who goes out to earn a living, to provide for his children, he said he's in the sabil of Allah. Who was fi sabilillah? He's in the path of Allah. He never said that person is a slave. And yes, look, subhanAllah, working for others. Shaykh al Fawzan, he will mention beautiful tafsil. And inshallah, we'll mention that when we get to it. He said, lastly, wa kadalika min wujuhi talab al risk. أن يتوظف الإنسان الوظيفة التي يكتسب من ورائها ما يغنيه عن الناس. He said likewise another means to attain a lawful living, a lawful livelihood, lawful earnings is for a person to get a job where they have no need of the people, they do not depend upon the people. And then he said for the وظيفة آخر شيء. The Sheikh said yes. A job should be the last means. If you can, and you can start your own business, if you can learn a trade, alhamdulillah, that's better. But at the end of that, if you can't do none of that, then alhamdulillah, there's nothing wrong with working a job. Why is that, ikhwan? If we look at the adilla, the proofs and the evidences, as the brothers, they mentioned, Musa alayhi salatu was salam. As we find in the book of Allah azza wa jal, he worked for the elderly man, in Median, for how many years? Huh? Ten. Eight, and he said, if you do ten, it's a favor from yourself. Likewise, the Prophet وسلم, he said in the hadith of Abu Hurairah عن, in Bukhari, Ma Allahu Nabiyan illa al -ghanam. The, Allah did not send a prophet except that he herded sheep. He said, Kuntu ar al -ghanam. And he was asked, even you are messenger of Allah. He said, yes, I used to herd and graze the sheep ala qararit for amount of wealth for the people of Mecca. There's nothing wrong with working for others. If you have to, if there's a need for it, nothing wrong. Whoever says that is a slave or slavery, they oppose what we find in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu Look how balanced Sheikh Fawzan. See, that's the difference, Ikhwan. When you talk with knowledge, you express the point and it's balanced. Imagine then, for example, look at one of the dangers of this mentality. You have a young brother, tries business, it doesn't work. Nam, doesn't have the opportunity to learn a trade, but they have to get a job. That person may end up depressed. Oh, I'm a failure. I'm a slave. I work for someone else. It just leads to misery. And we'll get, the most important thing, and we'll get to it, is to be content with whatever Allah Azza wa has written for you. Yes, you strive. The Prophet told us, Strive to do that which is beneficial for you. Seek the aid of Allah and do not be lazy. Yes, strive to do that which is beneficial in the religious sense and also in the worldly sense. Nam, alhamdulillah, if you become successful, alhamdulillah. If not, it's still alhamdulillah. Because that was written for you. And you are content as a Muslim with whatever Allah has decreed for you. You are pleased with it. And that ikhwan, if you have that mentality, whether you have a dollar in your pocket or a million dollars, you will be min as'adin nas, from the happiest of the people that walk this earth. Ikhwan, question. The Prophet وسلم, was he from the richest people of the earth? But we say that he was the happiest of the people of the earth, right? He was atqalillah, the most pious of the people of the earth. He was Sayyid Waladi Adam. He was the best of all of the children of Adam. But again, and I mentioned this before, when Umar saw the marks of the mattress upon his back because his mattress was so hard, he cried. He cried and he mentioned that, look at the riches of the kings, of the Romans and the Persians. And you're the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, 
O oh, son of Al-Khattab, are you not pleased that for them is this world and for us is the hereafter? Meaning, yes, Allah may give you this world. Alhamdulillah, and if Allah blesses you, use your wealth like we found the companions using their wealth. Naam. Yes, and if you're rich, jayyid. And permissible jealousy for a man who Allah bless with wealth and he spends it in the path of Allah. Azawajal. But not like some people today. And this is the mentality, Ikhwan. Again, those people that preach this message and they say that if you work for someone that you're a slave, they want to show you on Instagram, I have this car, I have a Lamborghini, I have a Rolls Royce, I have this million dollar watch, I have this and I have that. My conclusion, Ikhwan, those people, they're still not content. Why? Because if you are content, why do I have to go on Instagram and show, yes, this is my watch? If I have a nice watch, I have a nice watch, alhamdulillah. Why am I showing you? I'm enjoying it. Enjoying time with your family. Why do you have to show the world? Because they're still not content. They're still not happy. So they have to try and brag and boast and get other people's attention. Or they're looking for admiration. And that still won't make them happy. It will make them more miserable. But if you are content with whatever Allah gives you. If Allah gives you a million dollars, Alhamdulillah, you enjoy your life. You're comfortable. Alhamdulillah, you'll be happy. Still, some of the Salaf, they used to say, how do you know that a person is not addicted to this world? They said, if you have a lot of money, you're still content. If you have a small amount of money, you're still content. But does that mean that you stay at home and you're lazy, and you don't go out and work, you don't get an education, you don't work hard in school, you don't get a career? It doesn't mean none of that. You strive, but whatever is written for you, it's not going to miss you. And whatever misses you, it was never going to hit you. Naam. So the Shaykh said, فَالْوَظِيفَ آخِرُ شَيْءٍ إِذَا لَمْ يَجِدْ طُرَقًا غَيْرَهَا فَإِنْهُ يَتَوَظَّفُ لِيُغْنِيَ نَفْسَهُ وَيُغْنِي مَنْ تَلْزَمَهُ مَعُونَتُهُ وَلَا يَبْقَى عَاطِلًا يَتَكَفَّفُ النَّاسِ أَوْ يَنْظُرْ إِلَى مَا فِي أَيْدِ النَّاسِ So he said, yes, the last thing is a job. If somebody has to get a job, naam, they've tried, they don't find any other way, naam, then they get a job. Why? So that they suffice themselves, they do not rely upon the people, and they can support their family. Naam, those who they, they have to take care of and they do not just remain, you know, lazy. Sleep, yeah, staying at home. Feet on the, you know, sofa, watching TV all day and they cannot even provide for their family. That's not a man. What role model are you giving for your children? What role model is that? But that's why, Ikhwan, also another harm and danger of saying that, you know, people who work for others, they are a slave. The danger of that, you should look at your father. If your father is out there working and he's provided you with an opportunity to get an education or an opportunity to better yourself, and your father, even for example, he's a trash man, but he goes out diligently every morning, that should be your hero. Not someone on a podcast talking about wealth has no value. You should be respecting your father. But no, you're looking at this guy, you don't know anything about him, and the, you know, he's your hero all of a sudden, that, and you don't even know it that he's leading you to misery, and you're looking at your father like, yeah, my father's a slave. Your father should be a hero to you. He fed you, he, provide, he provided for your, you and your brothers and your sisters, he tried to protect you like was your mother. We have commanded mankind to be respectful to their parents. Why? The mother carried the child in difficulty, gave birth to the child in difficulty, carrying the child, breastfeeding the child, was 30 months. Nam, ihsan. Not that I look at my father, my father, you know, cleans the street, he's a slave. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Look at that mentality. Look how dangerous it is. And it's creeping, creeping amongst the youth. That's what happens when we are nurtured upon other than the book of Allah and the son of the Prophet sallallahu I brought Bukhari. Again, the translation. You don't even need to know Arabic. Look, I'll open it. Bukhari has a chapter. Naam. This is not difficult. But the problem is, how many of us are reading the book of Allah? How many of us are reading Bukhari? And how many of us are just watching, you know, Dave and John on podcasts? Bukhari has a chapter. In the book of Buyu'ah, Babu Kasbi Rajul wa Amalihi Biyadi, the earnings of a person and their manual labor. And he brings narrations from the narrations that he brings. 
قالت عائشة عائشة رضي الله عنها she said كان أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عمال أنفسهم that the companions of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم they used to work manual labor فكان يكون لهم أرواح so their sweat used to smell and they were advised to take a bath that's honor you go out and you you earn a living for yourself that's honor you come home regardless of if as long as it was halal some of the ulama they said ikhwan when allah azza said in the quran man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min fala nuhyannu hayatan tayyiba whoever performs righteous deeds whether they are male or female while they are a believer we will give them a good life. Some of the ulama said a good life is a halal sustenance. Some of them said it means to be content. Yes, halal living. It's a ni'mah. How can you look down on that? For Allah to give you a halal living is a blessing from the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal. Likewise, Bukhari mentions the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and al-Miqdam. رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما أكل أحد طعاما قط خيرا من أن يأكل من عمل يده. Nobody has ever eaten a meal that is better than what they have earned with their own hand. وإن نبي الله داود عليه السلام كان يأكل من عمل يده. And the Prophet of Allah Dawood he used to eat from the earnings of his manual labor. Why was Dawood singled out here? Ahsant. That's why. Naam. What's your name, Akhi? Idris. Idris. Faddal. Naam. You can't pass it? Ma fi ta'awan? Cooperation makes things easy, brother. Faddal. What's your name? Hassan. Barakallah fikum. Naam. Ikhwan, and there are many proofs and evidences. All of you must probably know some of the ayat. Let's mention them. Inshallah, I have books to give away. So, Nas'al Asil, Inshallah. I have various books. And this is an excellent book. I advise all of the brothers and the sisters to read it with regards to how to obtain a good life and to remove from oneself na'am, distress and anxiety and worries based upon the kitab and the sunnah. Na'am. Ayat, ahadith, and practical solutions that all of us can implement. And all of us can understand this and relate to it. Naam, who can give me another proof from the Quran about the excellence of earning a living and seeking one's sustenance? Tfaddal. Tayyib, I mentioned that, but Tayyib, ma fi shay. Naam. Ahsan, go before it though. Because even before it is another proof in that. What's the fa'idah from that? Oh, you who believe. When the call for prayer is made for Jum'ah, naam, leave off bay' buying and selling. Exactly. Outside of the salah, earn a living. And the Fadl Al Ayal Al Lati the Karta Badaha. Fida Kudyati Salatu Fantashiru fil Ard. Wab Tagu min Fadilla. When the prayer is over, go out in the earth and seek the sustenance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Nam working. Nothing wrong with that. Yes, like Shaykh Al Fawza mentioned, if you can be a business person, bihawa ni'mat, Jameel. Learn a trade, Jameel. Learn to be an engineer, a doctor, a dentist, other than that, Jameel. Naam, if not having a job, Jameel. Jayid. Aham shay is that is halal. Naam. Ahsant. Allah Azza wa Jalla has made buying and selling lawful and is forbidden user and interest. Tafaddal. Naam. Jazakum Allah khair. What's your name? Tafaddal. Did I say ayat? I said that. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب نعم جبد الشيخ بارك الله فيكم يعني لا بس طيب ما ادري كيف الاستنباط من الايه لكن طيب نعم many proofs and evidences اخوان many proofs but inshallah I'll close with the hadith of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he said he said قد افلح من اسلم the one who embraces islam and they have been given sufficient sustenance and allah azawajal has made them Please, with what has been given to them, surely they are successful. Look, the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who accepts Islam, the Muslim, Allah Azza wa Jalla subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them that which is sufficient for them, means, and they're content with that, that is successful. Now, how can we complain? That is why we are taught in Islam, what? We don't look to the ones who are above us. We look to those who are below us. Because that way we will all be, always be grateful for the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jalla and we will never be ungrateful. Naam. With that, alhamdulillah, come back here al-adhan. We'll stop inshallah ta'ala if there's any uh, questions. Regarding trading and commerce, is it half price of the matter of forex trading? Huh? Is it half price of the matter regarding forex trading? Akhi, I know nothing about that. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no forex trading. Us, those, alhamdulillah, who specialize in it or have an understanding of it. Naam, barakallahu feekum. I do not know anything concerning it. Naam, tafadl. Tafadl, what's your name? Ma'ad. how old are you? Nine years old. Nine years old. You're going to read the book, inshallah? You promise? Tafadl. A'ati Ma'ad. Barakallahu feekum. Naam. تفضل. إليه النشور. تفضل وش هنا؟ عبد المالك. تفضل. نعم. عن ذكر الله. تفضل. وش هنا أخي؟ عيسى. زاكم الله خيرا. look إخوان. just knowing these آيات. الحمد لله. may Allah has to protect all of us. it will assist you to stay away from saying. نعم. Whoever works is a slave. If you know those ayat, you know those ahadith, khalas, you'll say to your brother, Akhi, you're going a bit too far. Naam, Sheikh al fawzan as he said, it's better if you can do business, but Akhi, it's honorable to work. Naam, see understanding. And you look, subhanallah, even as it relates to these things, our view is based upon what texts? Quran and Sunnah. As it relates to women and men, and the roles and responsibilities of women and men, and the rights of women and men. This has been dealt with by the Quran and the Sunnah. You're not in need of my opinions or the opinions of anyone else. You have wahi, min Allah Azza wa Jalla, revelation from the creator of the heavens and the earth, Al Hakim Al Alim, the all wise, the all knowing, who created all of us and knows what is in our interests. And knows what is harmful and detrimental to us. And Ikhwan, a lot of stuff on social media, a lot of stuff on social media is just for show. It's the new Hollywood. You know, before to be in a movie, they had to go to Hollywood. Today, all you have to do is be on Instagram. People on Instagram, they're pretending. You know, I have so much money. They take all their savings and show, you know, this is all the money I have. They, that might not be even their money. It's not even a reality. And look, Ikhwan, the danger of that, again, and inshallah ta'ala, that's a topic in itself, how social media opposes a lot of the things that, na'am, meaning the wrong usage. If it's used in a good way, alhamdulillah. But if it's used in an improper way, it can lead a person to have a, yani, a deviated worldview. And likewise, it can just lead to more misery, na'am.